Jerry Ferrara, you know him as Turtle from Entourage, but this Brooklyn native has shot three movies in the past year and a half, and he's here to speak with us today about those projects and the many facets of his life. How are you? I'm doing good, Lee. How are you? Good. Good to have you here. So many people hate to see Entourage in, but you've been busy filming movies. Tell me what you're doing. Um, well, last summer uh, I shot a movie uh, called Battleship, which uh, Peter Berg's directing, uh, directed Hancock. It's a huge action movie, which is kind of cool for me. I have like my acting bucket list. Like I've always wanted to like die in a movie. I wanted that like cheesy proposal scene, and I wanted okay. to do a big action green screen movie with aliens and stuff. So uh, I got to cross that one off the bucket list. And um, yeah, just right after Entourage finished this year, I uh, worked on a movie called Think Like a Man, which is based on the book Steve Harvey wrote. Right. Which sold a ton of copies. Best selling book, Act Like a Woman, Think Like a Man. Yes. And uh, that was fun. That was like the romantic comedy kind of thing, which uh, again, I haven't really had much of an opportunity with Entourage to do because my character is always struggling with women. So uh, <laughs> things are good. Things are good. Um, there is a lot of talk about an entourage movie or some kind of project to follow. Do you expect that to happen? I mean, I do. The, the deal's in place. You know, Doug Allen, who's our creator, um, just has to write it. And um, I know the cast is in. And I'm interested, I'm interested to see because, you know, HBO and, like, cable ratings are always so different than network ratings. And our ratings have always been strong. But I've always felt that with, you know, TiVo and DVR and HBO On Demand and all that stuff, the ratings are always a little skewed. So... I'm curious because I want to see box office numbers don't lie. Right. So we'll be able to figure out exactly how many people kind of have watched Entourage over the years. So Yeah, it will be interesting to see that. You know, the thing that really struck me about our conversation that we had uh, yesterday was that you said it's a terrifying time for you in some ways, that you don't know how much time you should take off. And there are all these things that you think about as an actor. Tell me about that thought process being in between projects. Well, you know, it's it's just such a weird situation because, you know, for the last eight years, I always knew that from, you know, February to September, I had one of the best jobs that anybody could want. Um, it's terrifying in a sense because, A, I just always wonder, like, is it ever going to be that good? You know, whether I go on to another show or I do movies or whatever path my career goes. Like, we had such a tight-knit, fun group, you know. I just, it's terrifying. You just always hope that it'll still be like that. Um, there is a terrifyingly exciting part of the process, sure. which is after doing something for eight years, you know, wanting to do different things. It kind of like being a free, I equate everything to sports. It's like being a free agent in the sports world. You know, my contract's up with one team, and now... Other teams are making some contract offers, and you just want to make sure you make the right decision, you know? Is that kind of fear actually good in some ways for a creative person? For me, it is. Uh, I, I sometimes tend to operate a lot out of fear uh, in a good way. Like, it makes me rise to the occasion and keeps me from kind of getting laid back and complacent, you know? I think a little bit of fear, positive fear, I try to call it, is... Uh, is a good thing, you know? Like, my biggest thing in this business, and it is very much a business, is just longevity. You know, I want to just make the right choices to know that this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And I have other plans besides acting, too, that right. are related, so. And what are those? Well, writing, for one, I, I co-wrote two episodes of the show this year. I just finished my first feature that, uh, you know, a writer once told me, like, when you finish a script, you're not supposed to know if it's good or bad. Right. You're just supposed to think it was fun while you did it. And I have no idea if this thing is good or bad. <laughs> I, I, I think it's good, but in the same breath, uh, you could read it and just be like, Jerry, no, go go back and start again. So it, it, that's the terrifyingly exciting part. And just like anything else, the market will dictate that, and, and you'll see. But, you know, it's fascinating when you think about the journey that you've taken, because you were a kid... In Benson Hearst. Yeah. Uh, you said that you were an extra in a Spike Lee movie, but somewhere in there, you decided to take acting classes and you lied to your friends and told them you were doing what? I just told them I had a, a job. I think at the time, because it was the winter, I told them the greatest way to make money in New York uh, around winter time is selling Christmas trees. <laughs> I think I told them I was selling Christmas trees in Midtown. So I would take the train in. I would, you know, leave the park. We'd be playing basketball or football. And I'd take the train in, and I'd take these acting classes, you know, hidden. 
from my friends because it's just not a common, you know, career path in the neighborhood I'm from. And I thought I would get made fun of. You said that you, when you were well into Entourage, that's when you started to have a sense of security about the show. But up until then, you were always questioning the yeah, security of the show. You know, with the way it kind of goes with any show, and particularly HBO, you know, we went year to year not knowing if we were getting picked up early on, you know. Uh, Critically, we were well received. We had some award nominations. People were watching it, but it wasn't a ratings juggernaut, so we'd sweat it out every year. Are we getting picked up? Are we getting picked up? And it wasn't until the last few years that it was just a foregiven conclusion. Like, yes, we're getting picked up, and we all have jobs. But um, it probably wasn't until maybe season three or four where I really just felt the reaction from people, and I'm like, wow, this, people are watching this show. Like, we kind of we kind of did it. But it took four years to get that sense wow. of security. And, and now as you, you move forward, one of the things that people really notice about you is your dramatic weight loss. How much weight have you lost? Uh, I've lost about almost 60 pounds. Almost 60 pounds. I'm miserable. You're miserable? Grumpy. Just grumpy. I like to eat. I like to eat. Lee. Okay. And so do people treat you differently now that your physic physical appearance is different? You know, we could get into a very, very deep conversation, and I'm sure we will after this, but um, I'll say definitely uh, slightly um, what I've noticed very, very subtly is just assume that now I'm, like, more grown up and mature. And, and uh, How is that going to affect you as an actor or your career as an actor? You know, that's one thing I don't know. Um, it, it, was, it was semi for health reasons and semi for some strategy of breaking away from Entourage, which is something that we all will have to do, um, and just making your physical appearance different. It, I'm curious to see. Like, I don't expect to be getting leading man Ryan Gosling roles anytime soon, <laughs> I don't know, obviously. Man. But you, you know, never know. Regardless of how much weight you lose, you only, your, your looks don't approve. You, know, you don't become Ryan Gosling right. if you lose 60 pounds. So I'm just curious to see what that world terrifyingly exciting and you're coming out with a vengeance I, I just want to wrap up the interview uh, with something that you said that really struck me um, you said that when you in the early stage of entourage you say I wasted a lot of time I missed meetings I should have taken there were things I could have done while the show was going on to prepare for this moment and I didn't do it but then you changed you got in shape you wrote you started to take meetings and you asked yourself why you didn't do this earlier. Do you think that you've been a little too hard on yourself? Uh, you know what, maybe so. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, since it's me, it's hard for me to judge. I need an outside perspective. I, I am hard on myself, but uh, sometimes I say maybe I wasn't ready to kind of step up because it is a lot of responsibility when you start writing and attempting to produce stuff. Like you're not only just saying, it's not one facet like acting, it's 30 facets that you have to pay attention to. Maybe I wasn't ready when I was 25. But I do think that there's a part of me that wasted a few years where I was just content with having a great job on a cool show and, you know, making money and not really thinking life after the show. But for the last two years, I had a huge awakening and uh, vengeance. I like the word. I like the, I like the word you used there. Did you say vengeance? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and, I like that. And, you know, we're looking forward to uh, seeing some of the scripts that you come up with and some of the new ideas. All right. Well, uh... Lee, I'm happy I got the opportunity to meet you. Jerry man. Ferrara, thank you very much. You know him as Turtle, but you'll see him in a lot of other things coming forward. I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time.